the coaches and effective coaching methods a coach is the teacher role model and friend who will organize supervise and manage training to help reach the athlete's best level i think parenting and training or teaching are the same thing they are the two most important professions in the world john wooden basketball coach when the coach enters the field of play he must be a coach who takes care of the player before during and after the match and the first priority is the player's safety coach eligibility only certified coaches can work in all competitions only in international competitions no coach shall be permitted to be a coach and slash or assistant unless such coach has resigned from any participation as a player for a period of at least six six months and is approved as a registered coach this is not related to local events the duties of the coach are as follows the ring or rug must be left before the start of each round and seats, towels, buckets, etc. must be removed from the ring platform. A towel must be in his possession and may be used to indicate withdrawal by throwing the towel into the ring at any time except when the referee is counting. In the case of cutting, you can use bleeding stopper for blood clotting and comes in two forms, two, powder or sponge. At room temperature deep vein thrombosis prohibited activities no shouting or applause shall be permitted to a boxer or referee to encourage or incite spectators with words or gestures during the progression of the round. Touching the ring during the match or disturbing the competition will not be permitted seating area for seconds shall be within 3 feet of the round corner within 6 feet square no exit from the designated area shall be permitted as a protest against the offending actions against the referee he will not be allowed to act in an unsportsmanlike manner no communication device will be allowed in the playing area coach levels level 1 coach registered with the federation he must be at least 18 years old complete the level 1 accreditation examination and test and pass the test with a score of more than 70 percent level 2 coach registered with the federation he must be at least 18 years old complete a level 2 credential examination and pass the test with a score of more than 70 percent he must have participated as a coach in the republic championship level 3 coach registered with the federation he must be at least 18 years old complete a level 3 credential examination and pass the test with a score of more than 70% he must have participated as a coach in regional or branch tournaments skills and responsibilities first skills in order to communicate effectively with all persons involved in the training process communication skills are essential in order to effectively impart knowledge and aid in understanding the game coaching skills are essential and they include presentation explanation and leadership skills in order to effectively plan Train and prepare boxers for competition, organizational skills are essential second, responsibilities the first and most important duty of a coach is player safety the coach must ensure that the player is in good health at all times a safe environment shall be provided for training, competitions, travel and other related activities appropriate training approach should be applied in a non-abusive way, knowing that not all players have the same ability to learn planning and Preparing training programs before training sessions, taking into account the competition schedule during planning communicate with players and all others involved evaluate the training program, the player's progress, and the player's performance during the competition you must know and follow the rules and regulations of the competition, and comply with the code of conduct coaches methods of training bossy style the coach makes all decisions related to training and all other. Aspects of the game and the player is expected to carry out the command, listen and comply. Collaborative style the coach makes decisions based on the player's suggestions and opinions as he has input and ideas into the coaching process and all other aspects of the game. This allows coaches to build an excellent relationship with the player. However, this approach requires the coach to be highly knowledgeable and experienced to work effectively. Disorganized or mixed style the coach has little input and know-how into the training and other aspects. The fighters are allowed to manage their training program according to their pace and condition. This allows the players to enjoy their training and helps to develop thinking skills. However, this approach may slow down the player's development in both technical and physical aspects. The coach within the sports system the individual coach is considered one of the pillars of the sports system. He bears the responsibility to be a positive contribution in all areas of the sports system in which he participates. 
Code of Conduct for Coaches The coach should strive to acquire and implement the latest knowledge of the rules, strategies, and training methods of this sport. The coach must build a safe environment for athletes during training, competition, travel and game requirements. The coach should work closely with parents and community members to enhance understanding of the role of sport in the overall educational experience. A coach should have the primary concern for the athlete's well-being. When making decisions about injury care, rehabilitation, and return to activity the coach should promote effective communication with players, officials, fellow coaches, parents and community members the coach should act as a leader and model in developing the appropriate behavior of the athlete inside and outside the sports environment the coach shall use strategies in practice and competition that reflect a standard of fairness to all competitors and that are designed to encourage fair play. Effective coaching methods for coaches Productive coaches spend 75% of their time teaching and training their players, and 25% of their time coaching. The problem is that many coaches do not understand how to teach and coach effectively. In addition, some coaches do not take the time to understand how athletes learn. Here are nine proven steps to becoming a better teacher and better coach. 1. Understand your hobby and your enthusiasm for sports first. Before moving on to coaching, coaches must first understand their passion for the game. Having a high level of passion for the sport greatly affects your energy, creativity, and ability to motivate players. Enthusiasm is contagious. If one player or one assistant coach starts training excited, that emotion and emotion is easily transmitted to every other member of the team. 2. Boot Before the first exercise, Meet the athletes and explain your role as a coach and teacher for the game. Let them know that your goal is to help improve their athletic skills. Convince them that you care about them as people, and that you care about their lives to the fullest. Feeling interested makes the player more adaptable and increases effort and focus. Part of your concern is working through the player's mistakes. Tell them that mistakes are part of the learning process, and the only real mistakes are errors of lack of effort or focus both of which can be easily corrected. 3. Explain and explain the reason. Don't assume that players know why they are required to practice a certain technique or perform skill training. Explain how everything has a positive impact on their ability to play. Be as detailed as possible. Explain in detail, because it is important that they understand why you are doing certain tactics. 4. The basics first, then from easy to hard. Learn the basics of the sport you are studying. This enables you to design practices for the appropriate skill level for your players. It also becomes easier to help an athlete who cannot perform a particular skill. After grasping the basics, players move on to practicing exercises that focus on more than one skill at a time. Don't expect to teach complex skills to players who haven't mastered the basics. 5. Use the part method, then the whole method. Often, it is necessary to teach skills in parts or steps. Once again, an in-depth knowledge of the basics gives you an edge. Teaching a skill partially motivates the player, because they form a mental checklist to perform the skill correctly. This is known as task analysis. Moving from one step to the next focuses on progression, allowing you to praise the player for recognizing a skill and working with the player in areas that need more training. A good measure of whether a player has mastered a particular skill is to see if that player is teaching the skill to another teammate. 6. Effective Motivation Find something positive to say to each athlete in each exercise. This fulfills the athlete's need for attention, appreciation, and recognition. Be specific in your praise. Specific praise is used to reinforce the reason for the practice. Always try to find more positives than negatives while constantly praising the effort. 7. Hope and wishes for success. When an athlete or team finally masters a skill or concept, feel free to pause training to recognize the achievement. Praise their efforts, and remind your players of the importance of mastering the skill. 8. Be a role model for what you preach. Most coaches talk to players about certain values and characteristics they hope to see in all team members. Coaches are the best positive examples of these values when emphasizing good sportsmanship. Talk about coaching with honor and respect for the game. Dealing with officials when emphasizing perseverance. Never give up with athletes when emphasizing on organizing. Get organized. 
players look to you for guidance so don't say one thing and do the opposite. 9. Encouraging crossover athletes. Sometimes enthusiastic coaches encourage their players to practice one sport or technique throughout the year, which can lead to excessive injuries, fatigue, and boredom. Participation in other sports improves the way your athletes practice the movements and skills required for many sports are similar. Training results largely depend on the coach's ability to teach his sport to train not just whistle, issue commands, and go home a few hours later. Being a good coach takes time, effort, practice, patience, passion, and enthusiasm to make a difference in the lives of your players.